What's up, dude? Uh, Mario, <laughs> we gotta save the princess, dude. Come on, where's Toad, man? Where's Toad? How was Charlie Day not Toad? He's the little lovable guy. Hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> Welcome back to Kite Club. Ladies and gentlemen, you know the first rule of Kite Club. Tell everyone about Kite Club. Second rule of Kite Club. Tell everyone about Kite Club. Like and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining us. We're plowing through, fighting leaf blowers on other properties here. Uh, with me, as always, is uh, my guy on the keys, Mr. Ryan Neeson, and my producers in the building, Mr. Paul Corey. His baby's around here somewhere. We just made eye contact, and uh, your baby definitely thought that I looked like a, a Pixar bear that came to life, because I started smiling, and it, she was just sort of like, <laughs> she's like, that's, that's how well Paul and his wife are doing. They're hiring Pixar characters to come over and just randomly appear in their daughter's life. That's how much they love this little girl. Um, come see me. Uh, I'll be at Tempe Improv. Come spend your 4th of July. Come celebrate America at Tempe Improv. I'll be there June 29th through July 2nd. We got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday shows. It's going to be awesome. Ryan's going to be there. My boy Mike Eaton is going to be there. My boy Rudy's going to be there. It's going to be, it's going to be great. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. Jonathan Kite Comedy for all dates. JonathanKiteComedy.com. We got a bunch of stuff coming up, so check us out there. What is going on right now? If you, depending on when you listen to this, Trump has just flown himself to New York for, I imagine, a Yankees game or a Mets game or something. But he, uh, the big question is, is Trump going to prison? Gwyneth Paltrow is going home, and Trump is on his way to prison. He always wanted a monopoly, and now he's going straight to jail. Uh, Trump is, uh, this is an interesting one. I hope he does go to prison because I think that that is a, is a good brand for him. If anybody has a way of getting in touch with Donald Trump, I know most of our listeners, diehard MAGA supporters, put us in contact with him because I want to see Donald Trump run the empire out of um, a maximum security prison, which you know he won't be. He's going to be at the, the Martha Stewart prison. But he won't be able to wear the orange jumpsuit because he's just going to look naked. <laughs> right? It's his birthday suit. He's going to have a printed, he's going to have a jumpsuit that's going to have a printed suit on it. What's crazy with is a red tie. You get a red, you get a number in jail, right? You don't have your name anymore, basically. You become inmate number. So that's going to be like his new branding is his prison number when he gets out. What's, what's <laughs> Trump's prison number going to be? He'll probably just ask for 6969. <laughs> Give me six nine six nine. <laughs> he, I, I want to know. He's gonna. What gang is he gonna be in? He's not going to jail. He's I, not, I hope he is going to jail. I hope he's not. Not because I like Trump. I was talking about this earlier. I'm like, he did something that everybody in this country would do. Like the thing they're getting him for right now. Sure. He shouldn't go to jail for this. But if you were like about to get a job, and people were like, hey, we have photos of you with a porn star and we're going to ruin your life unless you give us a hundred thousand dollars. You'd be like, yeah, done. I think okay. he should go to prison. I think they should do locked up abroad. Trump locked up in abroad. Locked up. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my joke. You son of a, um, <laughs> the Trump's just interviewing him. What happened there? And him sort of, I saw a snitch on the other side and I went up behind him and I grabbed him by the pocket. <laughs> what he's going to sell products. Trump shivs. Yeah, just everything branded. Trump, Trump toilet, Pruno. He's going to be like Toilet a, wine made directly in my cell. He's going to be like a snake oil salesman from like the old west. He's going to have like a little booth set up in yeah, his cell. He's going to be Morgan Freeman's character from Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Which his name was Red. It's perfect. Yeah. I can get you a pack of smokes. He's going to complain. He goes, ramen used to cost... Six cigarettes. Okay, now it's a whole pack <laughs> because of Sleepy Joe's America. Prison inflation's at an all-time high. Prison inflation's at an all because of Sleepy Joe. It used to it used to be able to buy one for a Lucy, a he's, Lucy, he's, and now it's a carton. 
Come on, Sleepy Joe. I like this president. I like this idea of him running on a campaign trail in prison yeah. for president. of. The, he's like, I'm running for a ward. And they're like, that's not how prison works. I still, he would run for president in prison. President of the prison. President. He would. President. What if he did The Apprentice? Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> From prison? Instead of you're Instead fired. Instead of you're fired. It's, 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 you're electrocuted. You're dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're dead. Uh, you're dead. He's just deciding. He's, he's the executioner. Yeah, just doing. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> You're fired from life. You're fired out of a cannon. <laughs> um, that would be really amazing. But, but jail's probably the only place you can still get a degree from Trump University. Yeah, I think they give you one when you get in that, there. Making license plates out in the yard. That it's would all, be... Yeah, and he, he put the two gangs. He's going to... The, the white nationalists... A lot of good people. Yeah, the Nazis. There's very fine people on both sides. He's just talking about white nationalists and Nazis at this point. Yeah, he's like great people. Great people. All the yeah. He calls the Muslim gangs the Obamas. <laughs> I'm not joining the Obamas. <laughs> That's just his word for black people. Just <laughs> for non-whites. Did just, you see that? Did you see that? That, that? Did you see that group of Obamas over there selling shawarma? He just keeps asking him for birth certificates. <laughs> Where are you born? Here? Uh, excuse me, should he even be here? Are you legally allowed to be in this prison? <laughs> no, I'm a, that's why I'm here. He wants a whites-only prison. <laughs> We've got the water fountains, and now Trump is bringing the whites-only prison. Uh, let's face it, he'll probably go to a whites-only prison. No, okay, yeah. the Martha Stewart. Yeah, he's going to... If he goes to prison, it's not prison. It's his like, prison name, his prison bitch name is going to be Push Pop. <laughs> What? Just an orange dreamsicle that they keep. Uh, <laughs> push pop. Push pop. The worst part about Come on, that. Push pop. Like, excuse me, you can't talk to me. The worst part. Obamas about... can't talk to whites until whites <laughs> address them first. He calls the Jewish people the accountants. Get the accountants. Get the accountants in here. The Jewish gang of one person. Um, We're not in that prison. Well, actually, in the white collar prison, that's probably majority us. They're gonna give him Epstein cell. Oh my God! A very close friend. They're going to still live here. They're going to need stronger rope. <laughs> I don't want to do something. Like they're going to need. They're going to need airline cable. The grossest. It's part. still not going to get him. The it's like when Leia. It's like when Leia strangles Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> I've never in, seen in, a Star Wars movie. In but you know Jedi, yeah. you know when she throws the chain around him and, and Jabba the Hutt's like. That's how I imagine. That's how I imagine Trump hangs oh himself in God. prison. Oh, I'm, I'm coming. Yeah, <laughs> I'm coming so hard. <laughs> I'm coming so much. Ooh, there's my push pop. Uh, uh, I would watch this reality show, by the way. This, I'm pitching him, it to you right now. Him, I thought you had to yeah, connect. Him in prison would be so funny, dude. It would be amazing. Would be amazing. Just yeah, walking we, around like this is <laughs> this is gold. Yeah. They're, they've got. I think there is there is a Trump brand Monopoly board game. Is there not? I don't know. He's put his name on everything, so it wouldn't surprise me. I feel like Trump vodka is the only alcohol they allow in prison too. No, I said Trump wine, toilet wine. Yeah. Well, his vodka's got to go somewhere. It failed. So. It is toilet wine. Yeah, basically. He's it's already Bruno, 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 Bruno Mars. <laughs> <laughs> what other products? <laughs> <laughs> These are the ramblings of a madman. Yeah, Bruno. He's Bruno slowly Mars. losing his They're mind. They're just looking. He's like the Marquis de Sade, just putting hashtags up with his poop on the wall. <laughs> he's got like a syphilitic brain. He's just, just fucking yeah, just, yeah. Ooh, oh. smelly poop. <laughs> Bruno Mars. So stupid. Bruno Mars. <laughs> uh, Bruno Mars. I'm just envisioning what Bruno Mars looks like. <laughs> Ah, uh, Bruno, just like a homeless looking Bruno Mars, <laughs> just drinking toilet wine. Yeah. Uh, uh, that Uptown Funk will get you. Yeah, that's what it is. That's oh, what that's man. what it's made with. Uptown Funk. Oh, that's God. what Trump. You drink Trump's toilet wine out of uh, a urinal or no, no, a toilet with a handle. <laughs> that, that's be, the mug. It's good mugs. It's good marketing. Bro, it's amazing. Um, that did is, you, did you watch the convoy bringing him to the airport today? No. The news coverage on this was ridiculous. It was like the OJ chase. They followed him all the way from Mar-a-Lago to the airport, just driving. Nothing what, fun happening. What airline did he fly? Uh, Trump Air. <laughs> he actually does have his own plane that's just the size of like a Boeing 747. That runs on the tears of liberals. 
747, man. Like how what that would way, be his number in prison. 747. 747. What a way to drive yourself to be arrested. <laughs> Fucking full convoy televised, and then you get uh, <laughs> Trump water. Oh, sorry, Zen water. Oh, that's to- that Trump water is the toilet wine. <laughs> Everything's just toilet. He thinks it's uh. Je- that's what he is. He goes, I am Jesus. I turned Trump water into wine, into Bruno. Bruno Mars. Uh, oh, Jesus that, Christ. Yeah, we're, well, we, we love a good chase. Mm-hmm. This was not a chase. No, it was just it was it was hilarious. Kind of, yeah. It was like a traffic report for two hours. It's like we were just watching him drive. Like, who the fuck cares? I thought he would be flying out of the country. Yeah. Uh, a mission of guilt. Then you definitely go to jail. Yeah, a mission yeah. of guilt. He's like, I'm just going on vacation. Like, what a weird time. I'm going to Russia. We saw John Wick on Tuesday. We did. Amazing. Yeah, it's um, it's incredible. So, what is your guess? How many kills were in the movie? <sighs> I say how many people he killed, or yeah, just personally, total? personal four hundred, one hundred forty. That's it. Oh my God, he's not even that tough. He, how many words do you think he had? The entire movie? Yep. Yeah. One hundred forty. <laughs> 380. That seems high. He had 103 lines of dialogue. How many unique words? <laughs> Let's get that. How many unique impressions? Yeah. 15 million is what he got paid for the movie. Let's get a breakdown per word. 40,000 a word. That's insane. <laughs> Who made more? Him, him or Groot? Vin Diesel as Groot. They're, D- Disney ain't paying those dudes. You don't think so? No. No. Hold he, on. He, he did not get paid a lot. He, I mean, he got paid a lot, but he didn't get paid 15 mil. There was a huge... What did, he, what did Vin Diesel get paid? Kill yourself. 13 million per movie. <laughs> 13 million? Yep. I'm getting the per word right now. Well, it's... I am Groot. It's just... Um, yeah, that's fucking insane. 13 million dollars to say I am Groot. Six times in a movie. Yeah, well, yeah, the hardest thing he said he had to do was record it in all the other different languages. Aw, yeah. I'm sorry. Me. Yo me amo soy Groot. <laughs> me amo Groot. No, yo soy. Yo soy, I. I, I am. I am. Oh, yeah, yo soy. I didn't take Spanish. Yo soy el Groot, though. <laughs> it wasn't that. <laughs> the Japanese. Oh, I'm so stupid. Grooteru. Isn't that funny? Did you think that when you were a kid, that just adding an O to the end of the word made it Spanish? Yeah. Okay, me too. And you know, I thought cursive was Spanish until I was 13. So just altogether idiot. I am gro- 13 million. What did Chris Pratt get paid for that movie? Ooh, let's see. Because if it wasn't a it, lot more, I bet you it's less. You think so? Because he wasn't a star. Because he wasn't a star yet. It was just Bruno Mars. I am Groot. Okay. I am Groot. He was paid 1.5 million for Guardians of the Galaxy. Chris Pratt. Yeah. They don't. Obviously, that's a lot of money. But, now, now he's making 10. But And Vin Diesel was paid 13 for each of them? Yeah. He's made a total of $54 million from, off those movies. Off of Groot's. That's insane. Wowzers. That's nuts. That's actually insane. Nobody's you know how I am Groot movie. means everything? Wait, what? I am Groot means everything. Oh, yeah. He says, so, it, for, right? he says it for everything. Yeah. So in my head, I just said fuck. But I was like, I am Groot. This is Groot. That's, that's fucking Groot. <laughs> That's insane. It's Groot. That's it's Groot. actually Groot. That, that, it's Aladdin. Jesus Christ. It's Prince Aladdin. Prince Aladdin. Oh, man. But did you see they did a Tetris movie? I watched it. How was it? It's interesting. I'm not sure how accurate it is, but it's pretty interesting. So Tetris is a game that was available on a lot of the early consoles. Most people probably know what it is that came from Russia. And it's essentially a puzzle game. And they're trying to turn this movie with uh, Taron Edgerton into a Cold War thriller that sort of mirrors the birth of Tetris. And it's yeah. amazing to me when you look at how many video games, these are very different. When I, when I was growing up in the 90s, the video game movies were, like some of them were okay, like Mortal Kombat, such a great movie. But a lot of them were terrible. Like Street Fighter, Street Fighter was fun, though. It was 
I rewatched part of it last night. Really? It was bad. What was your least favorite part? When they try to do Blanca's backstory. <laughs> yeah. Blanca is from Street Fighter. He's the Brazilian man beast, which is, there's a lot of racial stereotyping that goes on in the game Street Fighter. You think that's what that was? So I, 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 Googled, I Googled the backstory of Blanca. He was raised by, uh, by creatures. They don't really say just wild animals in the forests of the rainforests of Brazil. I've, and then, according to the movie, M. Bison was trying to chemically enhance him to right. be a fighter. But it was so it was it just looked like bad Halloween makeup. It looked, looked like a guy trying to go as the Hulk for Halloween. In the 70s. Yeah, he looked like a rough Hulk. He looked like, yeah. Like he, a Hulk with meth issues. He and his... They didn't do the electricity. They didn't do the cool stuff about Blanca. Oh, they didn't do the electricity in there at all? Maybe maybe I, I missed that part. It was short. Hmm. But it wasn't... Yeah. It wasn't like the cool thing that made Blanca Blanca. I mean, Street Fighter... What? So, Street Fighter was such a big thing when I was growing up that people used to crowd around the machine as if it was an actual fight. Like the way that you would on a playground or after school or whatever, or, you know, whatever, in the alley. And people would put up quarters to go, I got next. And so on the bottom of the screen, it was just a row of quarters. And you'd have to keep your eye on your quarter because people would try to take them. Yeah. I... Looking back, like like when we were kids, when we wanted to play a video game, we'd watch because we wanted to get on next. How weird is it now that kids just like watch Twitch to see people play video games? And I mean, don't even want to play them. It's, it's fucking, my, it blows my mind. It's sad. My buddy was telling me his kid watches YouTube videos on a game they don't even own. He just watches other people play it. That's it. He has no desire to play it himself. Yikes. That's wild, right? It is wild. Um. What I was going to say is, though, about the video games, they, they, had, they came out with this, because they, they're doing Super Mario Brothers with the animated one. But they did a Mario Brothers movie with John Leguizamo and Bob Hoskins that was awful and great at the same time. But the crazy thing, because the trailers and everything are coming out for the Super Mario Brothers movie with Chris Pratt, is the amount of celebrities that are in it. You probably saw this, right? Everyone's pissed off that, not everyone, but a lot of people were pissed off that Chris Pratt was playing Mario and he's not an Italian American. Even though this is a fake plumber in a Japanese video game <laughs> that people felt a sense of nationalism who have never spoken up before are like, I think I need to weigh in on this. And they have, I'm surprised though, Sebastian Maniscalco was in the movie and he's playing one of the villains. He's not Mario or Luigi. So it's gonna be an Italian villain? Well, the Bowser is played by Jack Black. Yeah. And then he's another guy named Spike. Not Spike. Um, I can't remember his name. But he's like a different thing. And so it's crazy that he's not... I mean, if I guess maybe if you'd had an Italian-American, he would have been the guy to play Mario. it make more sense. It'd be, let's, <laughs> let's hear Sebastian as Mario, though. Well, I was thinking maybe just him doing the, the theme song. da 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 <laughs> da, 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 da. That just sounds like him exasperated. Da, 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 da. Or what was it? Da 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 da. That's how dogs hear Sebastian because they don't know what he's saying. <laughs> that's what it's. Uh, actually, I thought you were just doing his bit and couldn't remember the words. Da 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 da. da, da. Yeah, that's actually. Da 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 da. da, da. <laughs> that's how foreigners who don't know English yeah. just hear Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah, that's why he got cast in the movie. Actually, yeah. Princess Peach, we gotta get there. I gotta go. Ooh. Oh, that's a uh, Pac Man. <laughs> yeah, what's the, the woo? What's the woo? When he hits like the, he goes, ha ha. It's, it's like, a me, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't be Mario because he always sounds exasperated. <laughs> he sounds like he's not doing well in the video game. I fell on level yeah. three. Oh, great. I got a one up. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? I'm a plumber. I'm going down the tubes. My life is going down the tubes. Yeah, it's just, it, he's, it's uh, Mario's a stand-up comedian. It just That's, sounds like Sebastian talking to his therapist. Yeah. I got to take these turtles to, for what? To save a princess? I never, I'm exhausted. I don't need a princess. What? My brother's here? I'm the fat guy? Come on. I'd rather be home having a little munch. 
nothing, a little munch. <laughs> yeah, just a little eating. Who's this guy? Wait, who, who am I? So you're telling me I'm playing a plumber who's going down the tubes? Am I trying to get the poop out of there? I'm fighting the Bowser? He's just reading the, the audition sheet like he's never heard of the game before. What's a Bowser? What's a Bowser? He's a King Koopa? Is Koopa's a place I never heard of? Charlie Day's playing Luigi. Yeah. yeah what's up, dude? <laughs> Mario, come on, dude. Uh... How is... I just... Listen, we know I, I loves me a good Charlie Day. <laughs> I'm surprised at the casting of this movie. It is off. It's, it's, yeah, it's strange. I like that there's a voice for Mario's dad. Mario's dad makes an appearance in this movie. Who's playing? How is, how is that De Niro or Pacino? Chris Martinette. Yeah, like a good fella, like a good fella. Yeah. Mario, you little fuck. Mario, you, you know, you guys hear the princess, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, we, you know, yeah, watch out for those mushrooms, you know, they make you, you know, they make you big. <laughs> they make you big. Oh, Jesus Christ. Pacino's not in the movie at all? No, they, but you know, they should be they should be Wario and Wario Luigi in the sequel. Oh, that'd be cool. Hey, it's Wario. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? By the way, Wario Luigi, the la the, the laziest naming yeah. of another guy. Yeah. So you guys know that Wario is Mario's evil. Like twin, but not. He's I, like the negative version. I assumed it was like because he was like an upside yeah. down version. Yeah. So that is. Yeah, you get it. Mario, Wario, yeah. Luigi, Wu Luigi. No, <laughs> yeah, Wario Wall Luigi. Was, His yeah, name is Wario it's, Luigi. It's, it's, no, it's War Luigi. No, but it's not. It's Wario Luigi. Hold on, I got. Look, look it up. <laughs> hey, what's up, dude? Uh, Mario, we gotta save the princess, dude. Come on, where's Toad, man? Where's Toad? How was Charlie Day not Toad? He's the little lovable guy. Hey, what's up, dude? He would be a great toad. He would be a great yeah. toad. That is the voice that I feel like I... Hey, yeah. I when I see him play... It's Waluigi. Is it Waluigi? It's, just, it's not even an R. I thought there was an R in it. My apologies. It's Waluigi. Uh, Waluigi, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. So who am I going to play? Am I going to play Diddy Kong? What's his name? Seth Rogen's Donkey Kong? Uh, in this movie? Yeah. Yes, he is. Uh, I am a I am a giant ape who still wears a tie. Keegan Michael Key is playing Toad. That's not good casting. He's no. too cool to play Toad. He's yeah. He's no. He should have been Luigi. That may have been confusing for people. Why? Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Why would that be confusing? <laughs> It's a cartoon. It's not even, I mean, it is, yeah, but it's but, like a video game. But he sounds, he sounds like a black dude. He we cut that out. Like, What's up, Mario? <laughs> I didn't say, just his, his tenor and his voice. I don't know. I don't know. You I'm think he sounds like a mushroom? <laughs> you think he sounds more like a mushroom? No, I said he should not be playing Toad. He's too cool for that. So who should he have been playing? <sighs> and how come there weren't black characters in Mario? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say what, <laughs> what if the one role they're going to cast. Get him. out. I, I looked right at you. <laughs> yep. Well, what are you going to say, Ryan? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what are you going to say, dude? Go bash some rats dude? now, guys. What's up, dude? Uh, whoa, the ghost? Uh, he doesn't move when I look at him, but I turn away and the ghost looks back at me and I'm like, what? The casting is perfect. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it in the sequel. I'm back on board. Waluigi? Waluigi. Waluigi. Yeah, yeah, but then have De Niro and Pacino. But even Sebastian should have been Wario or Luigi or Waluigi or Mario. I think Mario. I, I like your Mario. Pitch. Yeah, it's a me, Mario. <laughs> it's a me, exhausted Mario. I would just love the observations that he would make about what's with this world. He's like, what's up with this world? So wait a minute, you're telling me everything's got eyes? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're telling me what? Wait a minute. So I pull up a turnip. So I pull up a turnip. <laughs> And the turnip's got eyes? So wait a minute. I touch a frog, I become a ribbit ribbon. But I touch all that. I touch a raccoon and I can fly? Yeah. How does that make sense? You ever seen a flying raccoon? Not if I don't throw it. He's just poking holes in the game as he goes. Why do I gotta get a running start? I gotta get a running start. Wait a minute. So I'm punching bricks, right? What? Are, 
Who, what plumber ever put, it's a brick layer. It's a brick buster. How many jobs does this guy have? Also, why is the side mission him collecting coins? He's supposed to be saving the princess, but along the way, he's like, hey, a coin. Yeah. Like, I'll fucking start going after these. This is a joke about that, about being Jewish. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I said when, at, right after you got COVID, because I, I got it pretty early on, and then I was like, people asked me how it was afterwards, and I'm like, remember Mario, when you touch the star, and you could just run through oh, anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, that is, uh, <laughs> but they made a lot of video games, is where I was going with this. Some of them are unbelievable. That's the thing about the 90s. There was a, I just rewatched The Fugitive, incredible film, super duper film, and, and it came out the same time that Street Fighter did. And Street Fighter was like weirdly, it was like international waters where they were like going to fight this foreign, you know, yeah, sort of superpower. Or and like, Bison was like yeah. a weird dictator from a country that doesn't exist. Raul, yeah, Raul Julia, who I love Raul Julia, but... They, and they don't look the way that people look now in in video game. I'm mean, uh, because of video games and the shaping of social media. All the superheroes look they look buff as hell. They didn't look that great in that movie. Nobody's believing that M Bison and it's oh, because yeah. they can't really fight. All the close up shots are like them like fighting like this, like rock 'em sock 'em robots. I'm like, they, they would never happen. Well, yeah, I mean, Guile though was fucking um, Jean Claude Van Damme. Jean Claude Van Damme, yeah. yeah. So he could fight. Let's get these guys. <laughs> and he's the American? Yeah. I love when him he, and Arnold Schwarzenegger play the American heroes. And they said to me, yeah, I'm George Washington. I'm from Tennessee. Yeah, we're <laughs> going to beat the... Br we're gonna, I do a terrible Arnold. We're going to beat the British with our bare hands. Not a great impression. Street Fighter did $99 million, though, in box I office. just love that it's, it's about countries. It's about nationalism. And they got, they got uh, John claude Van Damme to play Guile. Listen, you son of a bitch. Yeah. You know what movie God was God bless worse? America. <laughs> and no also, places. can you see? But the dawn's early light. <laughs> he's also a little Italian the way I do him. Yeah, that was French-Italian. He, well, he's, he's from he's, uh, Belgium. Yeah. So French, yes. It's, the French are like, we do not sound like that. Uh, Tekken. Tekken movie was much worse, by the way. Terrible. Much, much worse. Did $1.6 million at the box office and has a zero rating on Rotten Tomato. Whoa. What about Prince of Persia with Jake Gyllenhaal? Couldn't do that one today. Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, 37%. $340 million box office. Yeah, well, it was a huge movie. It was a huge film. I thought it was, it was great. You know what was But huge? today, they could never get away with Jake Gyllenhaal being the Prince of Persia. Oh, dude, it was huge in Iran. He also, played Nelson, sorry, he also played Nelson Mandela that same year. Look it up. I bet you a lot of people in Iran were very happy. They're like, yeah, this is what we look like. Yeah. This is exactly what we look like. Let's go see this movie. I think that more than anything, a lot of times people are like, they're okay with it as long as it's a cool guy. Yeah. That's why I think people got over it. People love but Chris Pratt. Tom like, Cruise played a Chinese sa or a samurai. It no, he was, he was American. He was American? Okay. In The Last Samurai, it was a great movie. What else we got going on? <clears throat> you want oh, to talk? I'm going to say this. We, we, we want to do a segment, The Animal News, with David Attenborough. David Attenborough, you guys know, from planet Earth. Captive orca whale will finally be re-released after 50 years into the wild. SeaWorld... And those other marine places, I did a, after reading that headline, that deplorable. I'll never support them. Oh, I haven't supported them forever. But w which part? The fact that they just keep them in They captain. keep them in the tiniest. It's oh, like whenever yeah. I see somebody who has a bird yeah. as a pet. It's so sad that yeah. it could that it has literally the sky is the limit except for your bird. It's like when you put a bug in a jar with a leaf and you're like, now you're home. Doesn't it feel like nature? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, Carmen used to have the, the bearded dragon. Oh, oh, she used to have a bearded dragon, and we would, like, feed it crickets and worms and, like, let it out of the house. But it actually, like, we'd let it run around. How is, how is David Attenborough not doing an anti-Sea World campaign? That's a good question. Here we have the most devastating death camps since the Second World War. We're trapping these beautiful, majestic creatures. Please let them loose. We just have Sarah McLaughlin's in the arms yeah, of the angel. But you, you put up a, 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 a chain link fence, um, uh, a graphic. Far away from 
what is this thing going to do in the wild now, though? It's been in captivity for 50 years. Go back to school? It's, I don't know. It's, it's going to go get re-educated? I mean, it's going to be like when Morgan Freeman gets released in Shawshank Redemption, I feel like. He's going to find it in its... I don't know where they sleep, but... Sam Wadaneo? It's going to just hang to Sam... No, that's Brooks. Oh. Other guy, yeah. Brooks was here. Oh, yeah. They... But they keep these these creatures and they're they it's it's got to be torture there was another case where they shipped penguins just in freight boxes yeah that's crazy there but it's these are such an attraction but penguins seem stupid orcas are smart like very smart i can't believe that orcas aren't killing more of them the employees um i read something about why orcas don't kill humans and I don't know how true this was, but somebody said it's because they've seen, like like the military, when they have extra rounds and they're on ships, it'll fire shit into the ocean. Right. The, one of the hypotheses is that, or one of the things to say is that the orcas have seen this and realized we shouldn't fuck with that. So they just shared that information and went out in an orca newsletter? Yeah, like they have some way of communicating. Like Sonar. Like, yeah, okay. Just like. <laughs> but if that's tr- crazy, I mean, if that's true, that's crazy. That's their version of I am Groot. <laughs> like, what did he just say? They're not getting paid the same. Oh, shit. I am Groot. <laughs> you sound like the girl from The Grudge. She could talk to orcas. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Wait, what was that? A dolphin. Oh, I was like, uh, you tell me. <laughs> that was the girl from The Grudge. Yeah. It's a different movie. Uh, I agreed with you. Sounds like a jack in a box. Or also, if you if you slow it down, it's the predator. Yeah. Are we picking that up? <laughs> yeah. That's the predator talking to orcas. Oh, that was such a good movie. That I don't. <laughs> predator and predator versus orca. Predator orca versus, versus predator. <laughs> Just like. And then. Hey, I've never seen a predator swim. Hold on, we need to clue for room tone. I'm doing ADR. I actually worked on that film. I have to go in back and do ADR for the orcas and the predators. That was actually also played by Vin Diesel. <laughs> it's so low. No, no, it's got to be even lower. It's like... um, uh, uh, no, he would just go, I'm a predator. Where's your family? What do you say? <laughs> I'm gonna kill your family. I'm gonna kill your family <laughs> to protect my family. <laughs> uh, man, <sighs> Vin Diesel. I'm just happy he's not in Super Mario Brother. <laughs> what, Brother. He, he'd be a great Koopa, though. I am. Koopa. I am Koopa. Jack Black gonna crush it as Bowser. Yeah, there's no Koopa in this. No. I thought Koopa was like, I mean, he's the king. How many riggedy goos do you think are coming in the movie? What the hell's a riggedy goo? Riggedy goo! Jack oh, Black. Jack Black. <laughs> Just riffing. Them. Riggedy goo! Rabbity peepity bow, yeah. I hope he plays him like that. Yeah, he, <laughs> like he's always doing his own version of vocal jazz. Yeah. J- Jack Black scat. That sounds like he's selling his shit online or something. No, that's called scatting. No, I go. I, I got I it. Go. I go. I go. I go. Hey, <laughs> I go. Sorry. I'm I go along with Premus. I'm auditioning for Mario Jack now, Black too. Scat, though. I go. Oh, skibbity doo, ribbity bow, ribbity bowser. Um, he turned into Trump at the end. Ribbity bowser. <laughs> He's Trump Super Mario Brother. Oh, God. I am King Cooper. These are very King Coopers. The, the whole thing is them just trying to get paid for their plumbing work. He's like, I don't pay people. I don't pay people. Okay. <laughs> and so they're just coming after him for the money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have a, a new segment on the show called What the In- Internet Thinks I Look Like. <laughs> Thank you for everybody that's uh, sounded off on this. These are some of them. I'll, 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 I'm on it. Sometimes I'm like, eh. So a lot of people were saying John Holmes. The porn star. Mm-hmm. We'll throw a picture of his dick up. <laughs> and that's pretty, I would say that's pretty accurate. I think they did, they did a movie called Wonderland. Right. Where maybe it was Val Kilmer who played yes, him. Yes, it was Val Kilmer. Um, so, so you're saying I look like Val Kilmer. Internet, are you flirting with me? Also, 
people think obviously the, if this was a if this was a a, a, a graph, McLovin is like seventy percent of the internet. It's, think I look like McLovin. It's McLovin or a McLovin hybrid, right? Yeah. So the McLovin hybrids we got are Danny Trejo, but that I think was just the mustache. I don't think I look. I mean, I think Danny Trejo is a striking looking figure. And I enjoy his donuts, eat tacos. You definitely don't look like Danny Trejo. No. It's just, it's, it's, yeah. It's it was just the mustache. A, it's a lazy mustache thing. Yeah. The lazy mustache. Uh, that's his complaint of lift. I was going to say that's what he calls Latinos in prison. He's like, lazy mustache. Lazy mustaches. The Pablo Escobar, if he made different life choices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look like it. I think I. To be fair, I think if I put a fat suit on, I would really look like Pablo Escobar. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. A little tan? Yeah. Get a little tan on there? Oh, you mean a gorgeous businessman? Yeah. Pablo Escobar Mitzvah, as we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> Pablo Escobar. Here's your Torah portion. Yeah. Yeah. His Torah portion is an ounce. Yeah. Hey, he does, <laughs> he's going to sell you Torah portions. Like, you know, when you had a bar mitzvah, did you have a bar mitzvah or no? No. When you read out of the Torah, you have like a little pointer thing. Yeah. His is just a straw. He's just it's doing coke off, off the, the, off the Torah. Yeah. Did he do cocaine? I mean, or he just his waistline it. would say no. That's true. If he's was there any left over after all the hippos did it? <laughs> so a couple, few people said Jim Croce. He's a singer from the seventies. Okay. These are deep pools for people on TikTok. Dude. Who the fuck do they know who Jim Croce is? I don't know. Uh, John Favreau, which I, I used to get when I was younger a lot. Really? Yeah. Elliot Gould. A young Elliot Gould. No, or Elliot Gould now. Currently. <laughs> yeah. Currently. Mid Gould. <laughs> I'm going through a mid Gould crisis. Uh, young Walter Matthau or Donald Sutherland? So all these guys are young. Or now, I don't know. They just have big eyes. I can't believe somebody didn't say, you know, the, a cat clock from the 60s. <laughs> I'm trying. I could see the Elliot Gold. I'm looking at it now. We're going to be selling clocks of me just going. Yeah, this is just the, the <laughs> we're like the worst episode of Shark Tank. No, this this is our Infowars. Welcome to Orca Tank. This is just a, a place for us to sell like Alex Jones. Yeah. Welcome back to Infowars. We got Gorilla Glue. We got cut cocaine. Billy Gould had a way better mustache, though. Oh, yeah, dude. He that's a solid mustache. Solid, dude. That is such that, a good mustache. That's a Sam Elliott. That's a Sam that is a Sam I give Elliott. That, I give that mustache five, five out of five Sam Elliott's. Yeah. Most of the internet just says you're tired. Which I am. Is. Bro, this movie, Baro. We'll get into it another episode. So keep sending us who you think I look like. Uh, I did a Comedy Magic Club this past weekend, it was awesome. Great shows. The reason I uh, wanted to talk about it was people have asked me before if I've ever bombed. And the first time I ever did the Comedy Magic Club, I bombed so hard. So it's like a supper club and it's in Hermosa Beach. It's sort of like Jay Leno's home club. It's an incredible place. They treat, the staff is amazing. But I didn't know it had to be TV clean. So I get there. And right before I get, I'm going to go on stage, this is a while ago, they go, oh, so you know it's like nine minutes and it has to be Tonight Show clean. And I'm going through my bits, going through my bits going, oh my gosh, not that it, not that I'm, not that the punchlines are like, and I said, cunt pussy fuck. But it's stuff like that where you're trying to eliminate things immediately on the fly. And at the same time, it was an 80 year old woman's birthday. Oof. And it just looked like a Civil War reenactment or a Civil War reunion photo. It, it was the oldest faces. It just looked like whoever was still around from the Titanic was at this show. It was a, it was a Titanic reunion, not the movie, the ship. The, and it was just ridiculous. The, the, my references, like Tom Hanks, they didn't know who that was. You hear some of the audience like, I wish I was back on the Titanic. <laughs> They're like, do FDR. <laughs> and so I just sat down and didn't get up for the yeah. whole time. The, they didn't know. They, they didn't know anybody. And so I was trying to, I was like, you guys know dating apps or whatever. They're like, what's that? It was, nothing was working. And I, I have a copy of that set that I kept because I, I didn't, when, you're, when it's happening in the moment, I'm just bombing. And I'm thinking, 
it's and I keep trying to go to stuff that, that I think they might think is uh, more up to speed, but I don't have any rotary phone material. <laughs> you know, um, I, I don't I don't have any uh, the birth of electricity jokes. Your grandkids are like, yeah, yeah. You guys remember muskets? <laughs> the only joke I have about muskets that I'm working on is a school shooter joke, where I said people think that everything is so great today, but I I tend to think that I would have rather lived in the past. It certainly would have helped with school shooters. Yeah. Because by the time it takes to reload that thing, anyway, it's a longer joke. And it's very hilarious. But I couldn't think of shit. I literally was just sitting there just in my head. And I mean, you know, we've been doing stand-up forever. I have a ton of... But everything, all of my stand-up, like you... It's not that you you can't be old to appreciate it. It's not like, hey, what's up? Who here is made of dust? You get it. But it's just not the crowd. It's not for an ARP audience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, I don't have any greatest generation jokes. Yeah. The sh- it should have been a sign when the show was at 3 p.m. That was the late show. <laughs> yeah, you guys are up way past your bedtime. That's, they were asleep. Yeah. This is my first time performing in front of a wax museum. <laughs> it was just, it was nuts. It felt like, and so I remember, but I did the, the shows this weekend and they're great because they have two rotating rooms and it's cool. You do one room and then you go to the other room and you, you do it in tag team. So you bring up the person and it's just two, it's a rotating Anyway, it's an awesome thing, and uh, so thanks for having me out. I'll be at, this comes out on Thursday. I'll be at Long Beach Laugh Factory Friday night. Uh, so come out and see me. So we got, so we got a lot of questions this week. Um, people are always asking if I'm working on any new impressions, and I'm trying to work on The Rock. So we've talked about this before. There, there is a joke. They did a great joke on us Saturday Night Live about how The Rock and Obama sound very similar. Mm. They sort of do, but they're both, they grew up in Hawaii. That's like, it's sort of, but not really. It's like kind of like a staccato cadence to their talking uh, to. Well, uh, the thing is, Obama has, uh, he wanted to be known as the man from nowhere. So he didn't want to have an accent to what he was doing. Uh, but he doesn't really have an accent uh, the way that he talks. He sort yeah. of is a very well-spoken uh, politician who's making great points. And uh, let me be clear, uh, it breaks it up. He slows it down because I think that the American people may not be all that bright. Whereas The Rock is fighting a Samoan accent or a Samoan dialect. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and the way he talks as The Rock, it's kind of weird. How do you, what, what version do you learn? Like the one where he, do you learn the Dwayne Johnson version or do you learn The Rock? Because yeah. The Rock is, it doesn't matter. You know, he has that sort of, where he's sort of pushing it out. And it's, he's, you know, he's sort of roasting the other guy. But, yeah. he doesn't, but he doesn't sound like that in movies. And he hasn't really done that guy in a very long time. Yeah. So what's, then what's the, the impression you're working on? Like as far as just his regular voice? I'm trying to work on his regular speaking voice. But then I just don't know if people, if that's recognizable enough to people. Let's hear it. Dwayne Johnson. He, I was black, I was black Adam in a movie. Okay. I was like, <laughs> you were black, what happened? He was, he's not Egyptian, well he is black, but, he, yeah. but that's why they let him play it. Because he's, he's supposed to be Egyptian. Well, oh. it's, yeah, that's, Teth Adam is, is, is Egyptian. Oh, really? Yes. Well, he also played the Pharaoh or something in a mummy movie, so. Uh, he played the Scorpion King. Scorpion King. Get out. Egyptian guy. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Scorpion King. <laughs> it doesn't matter what my name is. That's, yeah, everybody... Hey, Brendan Fraser, congratulations on the Academy Award. <laughs> it's not there yet. Yeah. And I'm also working on a John C. Riley. From I like him from Wreck It Ralph. Uh John, you know, John John C. Riley sort of has that uh he's sort of all over the place. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna win a medal. I am gonna win a medal. He's sort of a doctor, he's Dr. Steve Brule. You ever see that on Tim and Eric? No. Oof. Do yourself a favor and Google that. It's unbelievable. And orgies are not too much fun if no one wants to do with you. I feel like he's got the greatest face to uh, IQ discrepancy uh, there is, probably. Uh, that, that sounds good. <laughs> he uh, was, he's like, well, yeah, uh, I, I do him doing a book report. Yeah, I mean, he's, he looks like he would be <laughs> functionally He looks like he just farted stupid. and is trying to hide it, but, but you the, know he did. Like, <laughs> and he's like, huh, well, it wasn't me. <laughs> uh, I I don't know who farted. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Well, well was it me? <laughs> we got to wrap up here in a second. Blast from the past. Marlon Brando was born this week. 
I love Marlon Brando. That was one of the first impressions I ever did as a kid. What else? As a kid. As a kid. Yeah. I, I only watch old movies as a kid. I Peter Lorre, Marlon Brando, uh, Bill Cosby. Oh, we know. Yeah. <laughs> no. Marlon Brando was born, um, and then the... Uh, Ryan White. Ryan White, who became the national symbol for AIDS. <laughs> I, know, I was looking at you. The national symbol for AIDS? Yeah, That's... you don't know that? That's what he became. Oh, my because God. Because he got it from a blood transfusion. Yeah. He died at 18. They were plastering that kid's face everywhere. Because they were trying to prove that it wasn't just a, a gay disease yeah. at the time, or drug user disease yes. that could happen to anybody. And he got it from a, from a blood transfusion. From a drug addict or a gay person? Do they know? They're not saying. Not saying. Yeah. Do you know that gay people still can't donate blood? What? I'm pretty sure that's true. Wow. Yeah. If, if it isn't, if we are not editing this from the conversation, uh, from, the, from, the, from the pod. Uh, We're just going to have a stamp over Ryan's face that goes, disinformation. Okay. No, it's uh, FDA. In 2023, they started easing the restrictions. Disinformation. <laughs> There's a new segment we call Ryan's Disinformation. Um, no, there was like up until like a year ago. A while ago, yeah. yeah. There was like not a while. Like that's that's pretty crazy that that was a. Uh, uh, yes, I'm sorry. I meant it was a while that they couldn't do it. Who's in a hurry to of, donate blood? By the way, I what's mean, up? Who's in that big of a hurry to donate blood? I'd be like, if I was gay, I'd be like, we could leave that one on the books. My father, we could leave that donates one on the books. blood. I'll tell you a quick blood, blood donation story. So my father donates a lot of blood. Just he thinks it's a morally good thing to do. So, and it is, it is. So yeah. I was, for Father's Day one year, my brother and I both said, let's go donate blood mm. and we'll do it. Uh, not that we have any aversion to doing it, but it was just a nice thing and that we would go do it. And I wasn't able to do it with my brother and my father. I went separately and I went to the blood donation place and I'm sitting in the chair and I have pretty damn good veins. I have like heroin addicts veins mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they're <laughs> great veins and they... Uh, you don't have any nerve endings. Jesus Christ. You don't have any nerve endings in the vein itself. So they stuck a needle in. And I remember I, my, my veins are, are, they're like redwoods. They're real thick. They're like John Holmes's. They thick. And so they're going around and they are, they can't find, like they found a vein, but they're not able to get the blood to go through the tube. So they're literally doing this in the vein. Ugh. They're moving it around. And I am, Looking at it, and it, it hurts. You don't have any nerve endings in the inner walls of your vein. But you can really feel it. It's like, and they're, I, they're doing this with it. They're, they're doing Potter like spell. wax on, wax off, you know? Like a tiny Daniel LaRusso. And they keep doing it and keep doing it for an excruciating long period of time. Maybe like two minutes. They go, it's, it's not working. Let's try the other arm. So they go to the other arm. They put it in. They're trying the same thing. They finally get blood. So then the tube is out, I'm there for quite some time, the blood starts going, and then it stops. And they go, we have to find another vein. So they do it again they on the same the arm, and then, my hand to God, a nurse isn't looking and she trips over the tube, oh. and it literally pops out like a fucking, like a water toy from the 80s on a lawn. Nice. And my blood is just going everywhere. I've never had a problem. I get my blood drawn when I get my physicals all the time. You know, I have never had a problem with my blood being drawn in my life. It, it, that day was the only day ever. You know how they, they get you to squeeze the ball? Yeah. Like my grandpa, pretty vascular guy. They yeah. were doing it to him and like they told him to squeeze the ball. And he's like, you don't want me to do that. Like, and they did it. They had it on him and it literally popped the thing off of him just because that much blood came. Amazing. He's like, I, told I just you. do this. Turn your cough. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> At the same time, I get it done. <laughs> so, anyway, that was crazy. So, <laughs> do we have anything else you want to share? Or any oy vey of the day? You got to have something. You're never pissed about anything. <clears throat> um, well, I mean, not, not pissed. But we, uh, we went out for my wife's birthday this weekend. And just, uh, she could be a handful when she's, uh, when she's drinking. And uh, that's, uh, it's not a, it's not a, pa babe, I love you. We have a handful it's, of what? Ice that I caught that yeah, cut my hand she, open? She almost took Jonathan's uh, thumb off by throwing ice chunks at him. She turns into a snowman, apparently. She was, yeah, she, she was just, we were, we went, we had a great time. Shout out to Carmen. Happy birthday. We had an awesome time on Saturday night. We went to a karaoke spot and they, there was a bucket of ice 
And we were getting, you know, pretty drunk. And she just takes the ice at one point while we're singing and just starts warming up for spring training. <laughs> she's trying By she, the way, she's how the close Dodgers. is she to us when she's whipping the ice? I mean, the room was three feet. Three feet thick. It was um, a Brooklyn apartment is where we sang. But by the way, this was after she, um, walking to the place, fell over a street sign. <laughs> and uh, and it wasn't a like, street sign. It was on the sidewalk. Yeah, it was like not a street sign. It was like a, a parking sign, like a parking cone yeah. sign. Um, we're all walking. All of a sudden, we hear, oh, shit. And then a candle break, and she broke her birthday gift. She fell on a birthday, a butt candle. <laughs> it was like her airbag. So that shattered, yeah. but she was fine. And then we yeah. get to this room, and, uh, and she was, was also like, fencing me with the microphone. She was also she was going, doing fake parkour on the way there. Yeah. Just not even parkour, just lifting a leg and going parkour. Um, yeah. She doesn't know what parkour she's is. She's very athletic. She's very athletic. She doesn't know what parkour is, but she's very athletic. Um, yeah, that was, that was it was fun. And she won't remember any of it. So this is a nice recap. For she her. doesn't know what happened. No, this idea. is her way of finding out. She doesn't listen to the podcast. She never will. No. Yeah. I can say whatever so I can want. Say whatever I can say whatever. It's yeah. like my whatever. therapy. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, she stabbed that kid. Yeah. What kid? There's no proof. No, no. It. Other people are listening to the podcast. <laughs> It's not, that's not how crime is work. Guilt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You think crime's only when the person knock? knows about it? Uh, uh, my my only day of the day is is group texts. Ugh. I hate group texts so much. Yeah, because okay, they start out as good things, as as most ideas do. Right, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, but group texts are. The bane of my existence because I get involved in that or I'm, I'm on group texts where there is necessary information that's being presented every 10th text. So I start off, everything is well-meaning and you go, we got to meet here, we got to meet here and then questions start to arise and they're like basic questions and then the questions get really specific about an individual person. It's like, just text the person who's the administrator for the fucking group text. Because what happens is I put my phone down to record a podcast or whatever, or I, my phone is, the, the, uh, the alerts are never on. Anybody that knows me, it doesn't ring, it doesn't do anything. I pick up my phone, 40 missed messages. So now I have to binge a shitty show that I am on just so I am caught up on the bullshit. <laughs> and there's like, there's like three things that I needed to know that were on that. And then, and then people start sending memes. But not they, they send the meme with the information and then people start commenting on the memes. So it starts fucking Marvel multiverse splintering on the same goddamn chat. And then you realize after the, so we go to the event or whatever, whatever, people are still using the chat. Then they start just going, oh, this is the first thing when I type in like looking for Ryan in my phone. Oh, Ryan was on that group chat. Then the event is over. And now you're just having a conversation or trying to keep the energy of that group chat alive. It's like, go outside, make some friends, get on social media, do anything else. And it's all garbage. I am still a part of group chats. Oh, and, and by the way, they're side bullshit. People get added who have nothing to do with what's going on. Then they go, oh, this person was going to come. It's like, then get them out of here. <laughs> was going to come? It's like, it's, it, there's so many fucking people. And if you don't have the number saved in the phone, it's like, then you're That's having the side conversation. I want like, who is this? And then only one person knows if, and I hate to be this guy. If you have an Android and you're on a group text with all these blues, Get a new phone. They turn everybody green. They come in there and they, just That's fuck what up. I mean. They fuck up They ruin everything. property value in the neighborhood. It's like the game there. Othello. Do you ever see that game? Where it's like oh. the, 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 where they change the pieces. Dude, they yeah, fuck yeah, up yeah. everybody's shit. So you can't send larger files. It doesn't go through quickly. It's like, dude, get a new phone for group chats. Don't make us a part of your bullshit. <laughs> get a blue. And then when, that, when it's all over... What I was saying, people just are still on that shit. And it's like, I didn't even meet this guy who I don't want to save this guy's number so I can remember him from this group chat I'm trying to fucking forget about. And yet he's now having side conversations about his current life. None of us know you, Brad. Get out of here. Go find your friends. 
You're not even, you're like new to the friend group. And now they're like, you're, you're, you have inside jokes. No, we don't get your inside jokes. Go to your friends. This is our group chat. And by the way, we didn't even need a group chat for this. It was like a, a dinner that we were having. You could have texted four people separately. And now we have everyone and their significant others. It's growing. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, a shitty Facebook group. And then if I leave the group, people were like, Kite, you didn't know? We, we said it in the group chat. I'm like, you said a lot of shit in the group chat. And the one thing that you could have privately messaged me about. I, <laughs> what was the first thing you sent to me when we, uh, when we were going to Big Bear for New Year's? What was it? You started a group text chat. Me? Yeah. Oh, like, no, but with like 13 people in it. Well, when I do it, it's fine. <laughs> there we go. This has been Kite Club. <laughs>